Welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast, where you can write a book and change the world. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 142, Your Business and Writing Toolbox, coming to you on Thursday, May 9th, 2019. So in the midst of running a podcast and having a job and having a life, there are all sorts of scheduling conflicts that can and do happen. And one of them is sometimes I get to have a moment to share my own uh, thoughts and ideas and sometimes teach you things and sometimes just share ideas that might be helpful for you. And this is one of those days. So it's kind of fun for me. And uh, we have um, more great interviews coming up over the next few weeks. But today I wanted to take some time and talk to you about some things that have been on my mind. So for instance, here in Sweden, I've probably mentioned to you that I'm in an entrepreneur class for foreign born women. It's a six month program. It is um, sponsored by an organization that allows you to be in this program at no charge to you. And people come in and either speak in both Swedish and English so that you can understand, or somebody translates if, uh, if the speaker is speaking only in Swedish. And they explain all the things that you need to do, the paperwork that needs to be filled out, the way that you need to fill out your taxes, um, the different ways that you would do this, this, and this. Um, it's hard for me to give you details because even when they're explaining in English, sometimes I'm still listening to some of the Swedish words for something like the tax agency is called Skatteverket. And um, yeah, so I'm still translating in my head. I hear Skatteverket and I'm thinking, yep, tax agency, <laughs> instead of just knowing that it is what it is. <laughs> So without having a ton of details to share, and honestly, it doesn't matter because if you're not here in Sweden, then you don't really care what kinds of paperwork I need to fill out. But I've got business and paperwork and taxes and stuff on the brain because of this program. But also, I've been listening to the audiobook version of Stephen King's On Writing, which I also own in a hardcover form as well. And it's um, sitting here by my, by my elbow because I realized that it was up on the shelf behind me. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. And I was just happening to, uh, to be glancing through it and noticing all the places that I'd underlined. And anyway, so I've been thinking a lot about writing and I've been thinking a lot about business and um, having to sort of restart my business here in Sweden to make sure I'm doing everything legally and appropriately and that sort of thing here. So I thought that maybe this would be a good time um, to talk to you about something that I go through sometimes because maybe it'll be helpful for you. Sometimes I get so tangled up in the details that I sort of, um, I literally feel uh, like all the details have become chains and ropes around me until I feel like I'm not really moving very much anymore, um, which eventually leads me to feel like I'm not actually getting much accomplished, no matter if I'm spending all day working. And I think maybe it's just a um, combination of things uh, in your head, you know, um, could be a whole bunch of different small stresses that pile up. Uh, it could be that you're having um, some particular issue in either the writing or the business side of your writing that has got you in a place where you, you just don't know the answer. And um, as you keep on trying to figure out how to work through it, sometimes, uh, was it, wasn't was it uh, one of the traps in one of the Harry Potter movies that the kids fell into and it, the more they tried to get out of it the um, more tangled in it they got I think it maybe was the first or second movie okay I can't remember but I'm sure somebody is yelling hey, kitty it's this movie how could you forget uh, but I think quick, quicksand is considered the same too if you get um, stuck in quicksand you're not supposed to be moving all around trying to get out because it'll only make you sink faster and more. And that is often, uh, I mean, not horribly often, but often enough how I can feel if I start getting really uh, overwhelmed with all of the things that are involved in having a writing business. And sometimes the only way that I can really see clearly is to practically climb up on top of my desk so I can look down at it all, look at it from a higher level and look at the big picture again. So in case that you are or have been feeling similarly, this is the one thing that we need to remember. And it, it doesn't hurt to remember it even when you're not having a problem because maybe it'll help you to not have a problem. The most important thing about being a writer is writing. 
Yeah, you were probably saying that in your head just as I was saying it, right? The most important thing about being a writer is writing. And to write, you need an idea and you need some way to get that idea down on, you know, physical paper or electronic version of paper. And you need desire, desire not only to write, but to write instead of, insert what you're thinking right now here, instead of sleeping in longer, instead of, I would never really encourage somebody to say, uh, I'm not a good writer because I would rather go to the gym than write. <laughs> but, um, but if you go to the gym seven days a week, maybe there's a day that you could be writing instead of going to the gym. Uh, instead of watching TV for three hours a night, maybe you could watch TV for one. Instead of reading a fun book during your lunch hour, maybe you could write during your lunch hour. So the idea, some way to get that idea down and the desire to actually do it instead of doing something else. These are the, the main basic things that we need in order to be a writer who is actually writing. Now, um, when I was listening to the Stephen King's on writing uh, today or yesterday, I was getting to the point where he was talking about his toolbox. And he talked about Strunk and White's The Elements of Style as being a great uh, basic book or reminder book for anybody who's writing in the English language. I don't know how helpful it would be. I literally have no idea if it would still be helpful if you were writing in another language. But uh, Strunk and White's Elements of Style, he talked about that. He talked about building a toolbox. And we've heard this before. I, I have, you probably have, um, where people talk about um, what is in my writer's toolbox. And everybody looks at it a different way. For instance, the first couple of things that Stephen King mentioned were vocabulary and grammar. Because indeed, you need to know um, how to put words together and which words you might want to choose in order to uh, put your idea into words that other people then can read and know that they are thinking the same thing that you were thinking, right? So altogether, an idea plus the language plus the writing tool like your laptop or technically, I guess you could write a book on your phone if your thumbs could last that long. Um, but whatever it is that you type on, um, whether you're using Word or Scrivener or something else, so some sort of writing tool, pen and paper, people still do that too. So pen and paper, plus the desire, the desire to write and the desire to write instead of doing something else. These are the most basic things. And these, sadly, can be the things that get harder and harder to bring together as we move further into our writing career. Because once you get a book out, whether you're traditionally published or self-published, there is marketing to be done. At the very least, you need to have a website and business cards. There are so many other things that you're doing along the way, whether it's before or after the book comes out. How are you going to organize your ideas? Are you a sticky note person? Do you like everything to be on the computer? Do you have a separate notebook for each individual story idea that you have, meaning each book that you want to write? Um, do you like to have a whole bunch of different Word files that are all in one file folder? Or do you like to have one Scrivener file that has every single thing that has anything to do with this book in a single file? How are you going to organize information that you find on the internet, something that you heard on the radio or on TV, a conversation that you overheard or a conversation that you had? So how are you going to organize your information? This is one of the tools that you need to decide what you're going to use and have that as part of your business and writing toolbox. Also, saving your work is a huge big deal. We have so many ways that we can make sure that we have at least one non-corrupted copy of our latest work. So many ways. So obviously, you don't want to save only to the hard drive of the computer that you work on. You don't want to save only to a flash drive. Um, in the past, people would save on those two, thinking that there was probably... Uh, a very small, maybe hopefully infinitesimal chance that both of them would go out at the same time and really lose your work. But now it is cheap and easy to also save to the cloud. Um, another cheap and easy way that people have um, 
been saving copies of the work and I did it a lot, especially uh, before the cloud became a big thing and when I was moving around a lot, is email the latest copy to myself. Um, every night when I finished, when I knew I was done writing for the day, I would email a copy of that file to myself again. So lots of different ways to save your work. Um, external drives also still a, a good choice, but you need to decide what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. If you back up daily, excellent. If you back up weekly, good. If you back up monthly, let's hope that you don't mo lose something on the 28th day since your last backup because there are so many cheap and easy ways to keep that from happening. So, so long as you have decided what the tool is that you're going to use and how and when you're going to use it, that's all that you need. And the more that you can make some of these a decision that you then don't have to think about again, the easier it will be, the less you feel like you're going to be um, always tied up in the details because some of the details will just be sort of on autopilot. Some of the other things that you'll need to decide is who and when are you going to share your work with? So for instance, are you going to write parts of it on a blog? Or maybe you're not writing a book, you're writing um, a series of articles on, on your blog. Great. So how often is that going to happen? Is it going to be every Monday, every day? How long will they be? How organized do you feel like you need to be with the ideas? Do you need to have any research done before you write these things? Are you sending work out to agents, nonfiction or fiction books? Are you sending your work out to um, magazines or e-zines or webzines, <laughs> whatever, um, whatever people want to call the, all their various kinds of places that um, publish articles, short stories, or whatever. Um, traditional publishers, agents, and editors there. Who are you sending your stuff to? Um, and then how are you going to keep track of when somebody got back to you? So for instance, um, if you are just giving your stuff to your critique group every week or every month, there's probably not that much that needs to be uh, on your mind as far as keeping track of something. But if you're sending your work out to agents because you're trying to get an agent um, so that you can sell to a traditional publisher easier, then you want to keep track of when you sent, what you sent, to whom, at what agency, using what email address or submission process, um, and then a, a note section usually, and something that has to do with the date and, and what was said when they got back to you. So what are you going to use for that? You could use pen and paper. These things work. <laughs> uh, a notebook or journal. You could use Excel or Apple's version, which is numbers. You could use Google Spreadsheets. Uh, you just have to decide what you're going to use and then set it up and consistently use it. So it's once again, another thing that's just on autopilot. A calendar will track just about anything. Now you could just use a calendar with big enough squares and put everything on the calendar, or you could put almost everything on the calendar. I have a lot of different things that I want to keep on my calendar. So um, tracking all the information, uh, for instance, if I were sending my work to an agent, there's just not enough room. And also I would have to page back through every page of the calendar looking for, well, when was the last time that I sent something out? So using the calendar for 100% of everything may not be your best choice, uh, and may not be your most efficient choice, uh, certainly not when you're trying to actually find the information again. But you can put a lot of things on a calendar. So for instance, conference dates for conferences that you're going to, conference dates for conferences that you want to go to, and you want to be reminded, if I can save up enough money to pay for this conference, it's in July or October or whatever. Uh, so for instance, um, as soon as I think about it, because I just now thought about it while talking to you, I want to go to London Book Fair next year. Um, this year was too soon. I was still in the middle of all sorts of moving stuff and new job stuff. And um, so that wasn't really going to work for me. But I was talking to my husband, John, and we're like, yeah, there's no reason really why we couldn't go next April. But I need to put it on the calendar so I can remember that as we start getting closer to it, I need to uh, figure out you know, what I need to do as far as, uh, you know, is there a tuition or a cost or a ticket or something? Um, airfare, hotel, uh, asking time off of work, you know, all these various things. So um, having these things on your calendar will help 
you to remember so that, for instance, if you're going to a conference with an early bird discount, you want to take advantage of that if you know for sure that you're going and you've already saved up the money for it. And then flights will be cheaper, too, when you buy them in advance. So, again, lots of reasons why calendars work great for that. I've often tracked my blog posts on my calendar, um, mostly as a way to remember, oh my gosh, right, it's this time of the month again when I'm uh, posting on that blog, or this is when I have a guest spot on somebody else's blog, or this is the thing that's happening on my blog that I needed to remember. Um, so that's a possibility. I've used my calendar to just, um, in the bottom corner, write the word count for the day. So that's been kind of a quick and easy way to just kind of glance over and go, okay, great. That's good. That's good. Woo. Okay. That was, that was not good. There's four days of zero, you know, um, trust me, don't feel bad. I've had a lot more than four days of zero in a row. <laughs> uh, queries, basically anything that you could want to keep track of. Now, I talk a lot about a done journal. I've talked about it a lot during the last year and a half, and I think it was my episode number one of this podcast. I am a huge fan of the done journal because it helps me to remember that I actually did accomplish a lot today, this week, this month, this year, and what I accomplished. It often will help me to remember how long it took me to do something. Uh, it's a good place to write down any information that you want to keep track of. It's proof, um, at least with the U.S. tax agency, that you truly are working at this business. If you haven't made any money yet, it's proof that um, you're not just uh, idling your time away saying it's a business when it's really a hobby that you do when you feel like it on, you know, the third Tuesday of every January. <laughs> um, so you could use your calendar like a Dun journal if that were... Um, just the way that your brain worked. Um, also, if you self-publish, your deadlines and your subcontractor's deadlines, these are all definitely great things to have on your calendar. So for instance, if I tell my editor, I'm going to have um, my draft ready for you to edit by the 23rd, I need to make sure that I'm done by the 23rd because now she's set aside the amount of time that she needs and she's not taking any work during that time because I said, I'm sending you my work. I need to make that deadline and I need to uh, not tell her the day before that I'm not sending her work because depending on who your editor is and what their policies are and that sort of thing, um, you could be on the line for uh, some amount of the fee if you miss somebody's deadline. You know, it's like canceling uh, your hotel reservation the morning that you're supposed to be there. There's usually at least a, uh, a one night uh, that you have to pay. It's sort of a cancellation fee. <laughs> so you want to know what your other uh, deadlines are for people who are doing your editing, your... Um, Book interior design, if you're not doing it yourself, Vellum is an awesome tool, uh, who is doing your uh, book covers and uh, maybe audiobooks. You need to keep those deadlines so that um, you stay on track, but also so that you're not causing other people's schedules to get all screwed up. Um, that will probably not endear you <laughs> to the people that you're working with. Uh, not that there aren't all sorts of times in life when you have to be like, I'm so sorry, but this thing just happened and can we reschedule? Because that sort of thing happens and everybody understands it. You just don't want to be an unorganized person who simply wasn't paying attention and therefore missed your deadlines. So again, uh, a calendar is a great way to track all of these things. And I use different colored sticky notes for a lot of these things. So for instance, deadlines might be in bright green or uh, maybe bright red or something like that. So it really sticks out to me. That way at a glance, I can see, ah, okay, this is a deadline. What's it a deadline for? Okay, nope, no problem. I'm still on track with this. Oh, crap. I don't know if I'm going to make this deadline. And then I have to think, you know, should I email this person and say, can we push it or where are we at? And then, then I know whether or not I need to lose sleep because I have to make the deadline or if whew, <laughs> we were able to, to push it back a week or a month or whatever it was. So calendars, very important. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you, have forgotten or didn't know, I've taught a lot of classes on uh, time management, calendar management, project management. So uh, I, I have a, a lot of little tricks that I really like. Now, if you're making or spending money, there's 
needs to be some way that you're going to check that. Again, lots of things that you could do. Um, I have uh, as a very um, kind of top level approach, like not as part of my accounting system, but just it, um, as a way for me to be able to see things at a glance. I have had a uh, little green sticky note at the bottom of each month of my monthly calendar that I write down uh, how much money I spent that much that month and how much money I earned that month. Uh, and that way I can have an idea of things are going in the right direction or not. Um, uh, maybe I made a lot of money one month and so I can spend a little bit more on marketing the next month or, um, you know, something happened with the, you know, people talk about Amazon's algorithms changed and so my income dropped from who knows what reason. Uh, so it's nice to be able to just have a at a glance view and you could put that on your calendar uh, or your done journal or, or wherever works for you. But you need to have some formal way that you're tracking your money and, you know, accounting for it. So you could Google budget software and find a budget software that works well for you. A lot of people use Quicken. I use QuickBooks, same company. Uh, I used to be an accountant, so uh, I like the way that uh, QuickBooks works. It's, um, it's the way that my accountant brain works. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of things. Um, Mind Your Own Business used to be a big one. Um, there is, uh, there were some really popular ones that didn't show up when I did a Google search a couple of days ago when I was thinking, oh, I should, I should consider uh, doing an episode on business and writing. Uh, so find out what is good software now. Uh, if you already have something, and even if it's old, but it's still usable, then that works too. You could use Excel or Numbers or Google Spreadsheets. You could use a spreadsheet if you needed to. But in any case, you need to keep track because depending on where you live and what the tax system is where you live, you may be able to apply the expenses against taxes that you might owe uh, or, or to get a, a better refund. Or it might just be a way of you being able to um, keep track of, to know personally yourself, how much money am I spending on this versus how much money am I earning? If you're working a business and making money, there are some other things that you need to keep track of. And remember, even if you're thinking, yeah, I know I always do this. Um, I, I already have it set up. But <laughs> some things need to be renewed and some things don't. So for instance, you need to make sure that wherever you live now, you have all the correct licenses. Um, some cities require a business license, even if you have uh, a home business in your home. Um, sales tax, depending on where you live. Uh, it's also called use tax in some places. Um, other places call it sales and use tax. And I'm sure that I've seen at least one other word that means that um, when you sell, say, a book, and then you have to charge a little bit of tax on it, and that tax goes to the government. Um, you need to know when that is due and to whom it is due and how you fill out the forms. A lot of times it's online now, which is kind of great. Um, but some of it can be complicated. So if you wait until the day that it's due and then you need to call the number and ask for help, you might actually be filing your taxes late because that phone number might be full of a busy signal because <laughs> of all the other people calling in. Uh, income taxes. So again, depending on where you live and how your business is organized will be all sorts of different ways that that might happen, but you need to be clear on when you need to start preparing it and when it's due. And then also keep in mind the things that have renewals. So for instance, I knew that my sales tax was due in California on July 31st. And so I would have a sticky note on my calendar, July 31st, sales tax due. I had another sticky note on my calendar, July 1st, start working on sales tax because I knew that I probably wouldn't have time to work on it on July 1st, but I knew I had to start thinking about it. There are other things that I forgot are not every year, but they still need to be renewed. So for instance, my DBA, doing business as, uh, also called a fictitious business name. So it's the business name that I'm using instead of using my, my own name. So for me, it's Daydreamer Entertainment. I knew, but then eventually completely forgot that that had to be renewed every five years in California. And at some point, I realized that it had expired because my accountant couldn't find Daydreamer Entertainment's name, you know, listed in the in the role. It's hard for me to explain because it doesn't really matter about the detail. The point is, 
what are you doing or have you done that you will need to renew at some point in the future? And how are you going to remember that? So at one point after I did renew it again, um, I put on um, like, I think December 1st of every calendar, because uh, I, I figured by then I would have a new calendar for the new year. Um, renew DBA in three years, renew DBA in two years, renew DBA next year. <laughs> and I would have the date that, so that I would finally remember to do it correctly again. It's just, there are so many details to your business. It's super easy to forget things. So the more that you can have a system, the more that you can have this toolbox with these tools in it, and these tools will help you to get things done efficiently, hopefully quickly, hopefully easily, the better off we'll all feel. Um, all the things that need to be done from a marketing perspective, whether it's uh, working on your website, creating business cards, creating advertisements, um, creating a, a newsletter list, sending things out regularly every certain amount of time, like I say every month, um, making sure that you have a newsletter that goes out every month with hopefully imp interesting information in it. Um, these things, they need to be planned out, right? Now, here's the thing. Not to mention filling your creative well so that you can continue to stay creative and do things that you consider play, not just things that you consider fun. Um, I think that reading and TV and movies are fun. Um, I've found that the more I go to museums, the more I realize I really like museums. Um, and then, you know, various other hobbies that all of us have that we do a little bit or a lot of. But making sure that you're doing things that um, you're not thinking, oh, I'm going to watch this movie because it's a romantic comedy and I can keep track of, you know, when all the different beats are hitting and how the dialogue is going uh, because then your brain is still working um, if you really are trying to track those things. So you need to make sure that you're taking time for actual play, that the play that your brain sees as play and finds refreshing and gives you more energy. All right. So again, now so many details, so many places for us to get caught up in, um, in the dirt and the mud and the making of our mud pies that we maybe are forgetting what, what are we doing and why are we doing all this? Oh yeah, because what I really wanted to do was write. I want to write stories or maybe you want to write how-to articles, helpful things, maybe um, pieces about relationships, but there's something that we wanted to write and there was a reason that we wanted to write it and we found joy in it and we have to be careful that we don't get too caught up in all of this dirt and details, as I've been saying, that we lose the writing. Because sometimes you just have to stop and ask yourself, are you still writing? Question number one, are you still trying to improve your writing? Is your writing getting better? Are you doing things, taking time to do things to make your writing better? Because all of these things are really important to our creative self and additionally will obviously make a big difference in our business, uh, the, the business part of the writing as well. You need work to get out there in order to sell, in order to make money and have a business. But we need to be writing. I am um, coming to you from a place of it's just, it's really embarrassing sometimes to admit to people that you think you're, they're probably writing more than me. So I don't want to admit that I'm not getting much done. Um, but I have to say, today was a really good day. I specifically made a plan a couple of days ago uh, to book a conference room during lunch hour when nobody else was going to need it. I brought my laptop into work. I told a few other people that I was going to do this and did they want to join me. And it would be a no talking, but all of us sitting together in a room working on our own writing during lunch hour. And that's what we did. And it was awesome. And I wrote 444 more words than I would have if I hadn't done that today. <laughs> so that's awesome. Now, just so that you know, my first thought was, my gosh, that's one tenth of the word count that I would do on, you know, some other good day where I would write four or 5,000 words in a day. And yet I have to remember 
it's exponentially more than zero, <laughs> which has been too many of the days for a really long time. So also just keep in mind, like, are you doing better than you did yesterday? Are you doing better than you could have done if you had done nothing different today? <laughs> are you writing? Are you writing? That's the thing. Because I needed to figure out how am I going to get some words on the page. And not just words. Not just um, writing. I, I, I have to figure out the beginning of the story. Like how does it work when she does this and he, he does that? Or should I do it this other way? I've done that before. But I still feel like in the end, I didn't really have any real writing. But today, I had a little bit of a scene, and it made sense, and I was really, really happy. And now I will do it again tomorrow. I already booked another conference room for tomorrow. My laptop is charged and ready to go, and I have at least one friend is going to join me again. So that's part of my toolbox now. It's a new tool for me. I think that um, John and I talked about it when I interviewed him, was it last week, the week before, um, that he has found that writing during his lunch hour is getting in um, several more pages a week than he normally was doing when he only wrote on the weekends. So that's kind of my my talk and uh, hopefully helpful um, list of suggestions. Basically, you need to decide on your own toolbox. What are the things that you need to get done and what are the tools that you need to get them done? It could be um, physical items as well as uh, just, um, uh, for, for instance, um, I'm a huge sticky note fan. Uh, so I have quite a pile of sticky notes. I mean, really, it's almost embarrassing. <laughs> um, I have certain pens that write really easily and don't tire out my hand, um, mostly gel pens. They just write so smooth. I have checklists, which is kind of what I wanted to help you develop your own checklist with this episode, uh, as far as checklists of the kinds of tools that you need. But some of my checklists are things like... Um, uh, the best ways to um, open a scene with uh, tension or something like that. I don't know. I have so many checklists. <laughs> um, it could be really anything that works for you could be part of your toolbox. Anything that gets you writing, that keeps you writing, that helps you to write better, and that helps you to get all the rest of the work done without feeling really, really stressed out. Um, I definitely think that all of us need to find and keep in mind what is our tool for getting unstuck. Now, there might be two or three different tools, like sometimes um, you need a big hammer for something, sometimes you need a mallet for something, uh, sometimes the, the, the hammer and the mallet aren't working, you need a crowbar. So, you know, what are some of the tools that you have found will get you unstuck? What is your gentle prodder when you're like, you know, seriously, I need to not watch two episodes of this show, even though I didn't know it was going to be part of a, you know, two-parter, and I just want to watch the other part tonight. No, I'm going to gently prod myself back over to my computer and write for an hour instead of watch TV for the second hour. Or what is your electric prodder? Like, seriously, stop, go now. <laughs> when you're like, no, it'll be fine. I'll write for two hours tomorrow night. That's fine if you're really going to do it. But if you find that you don't always do it, you need a bigger prodder. <laughs> and also, what's your celebration tool? You know how much that I think celebration is important. Um, not only do I feel it and believe it, but I know it to be true because neuroscience and cognitive science have shown us that our brain um, likes to be told this is right. This is the thing that I needed you to do. Yes, please do more of this. And celebrating your successes is one of the ways that your brain knows, yes, that's the thing. I want to do more of it because it feels so good, this thing that I'm doing right now called celebrating. So definitely know what your celebration tool is. I hope that this helps you to come up with a toolbox, or if you don't like that word, you can think of some other word, briefcase, of all the tools that you need, and keeping in mind, whenever necessary, stand up on top of your desk so that you can see above all of the, oh, well, in my life, 
<laughs> you don't see what I see right now, but I, I'm surrounded by boxes still, unpacked boxes and things on shelves that are not really put away. They're just stacked. Um, so sometimes I just really need to get above all of it and ask myself, what is it that I really need in order to be a writer today? And for the most part, it's the idea, the language in the tool, laptop or whatever, and the desire to do it more than anything else during this hour, this half hour, this period of time. So I hope that that helps you. Good luck. Make a list or whatever it is that, that you do that makes your brain go, yes, this is my, this is, this is how I'm going to remember what my tools are. And, um, you know, maybe you could talk to a couple of other writer friends and see what they're doing with tools. Maybe they haven't thought of something. You can all work on, on your ideas together. Keep in mind, you know, we're all going to have a slightly different toolbox and slightly different tools in the box. But for the most part, it should be a pretty helpful, helpful tip for all of us and a good reminder for when we're having a in the weeds kind of moment. <laughs> all right. Listen, have an excellent week. Get some writing done, um, book some time away if you have to, and get even a few hundred words done like what I did today, and we will talk to you more next week. See ya.